So you've finally gotten back into playing the flute after possibly many, many years away from it. And you're pretty desperate to make progress fast. The problem is, it's not as easy as you thought it would be. There just seems to be so much to do, so much to learn. Where do you even start? What do you work on? It's overwhelming. It's scary. Ah, I hear you. And in fact, this is an experience that I have seen very, very commonly, not only in my students, but in many of our community members. But there are also some things that I find students do that really gets in the way of them making that progress. So today I'm going to show you guys some of the things that you absolutely need to do in order to make good progress on the flute. Hi everyone, if you don't know yet, my name is Tatiana and this is The Flute Practice, a fun and effective way to learn the flute. Stay tuned for the end of this video because we have got a super exciting announcement and I'm excited to share it with you guys. Okay, so the first thing that you absolutely need to make good progress on the flute is you need some kind of a system or a plan. A big mistake that students make is that they just kind of start practicing and they just arbitrarily move through different resources that they find in a whole bunch of different places, but they don't actually have a clear system or plan that they're following to make progress. If you're a complete beginner, you're starting from scratch, or you've really had such a long break that you feel like a complete beginner, you are going to want to do something like a beginner tutor book. We've got a flute kickstarter guide that we've put down in the description for you guys, so you can go and download that for free. It's got a bunch of suggestions of books, good beginner books for you to get started with. These books are great because they walk you through the processes very, very systematically. And I know that some of them are written for like kids and you as an adult feel like, why am I doing this? But just trust me here for a moment. It's the system that is so important. One of the projects I am working on, by the way, is creating an adult friendly beginner book because I think it's necessary. Although I do think we should all bring out our inner child every now and then. So don't dismiss those resources either, please. Now, if you're a little bit further down the line, or perhaps the break you took wasn't so long and you're a little bit more advanced, there's a certain set of things that you're going to want to include in your practicing and a bunch of really useful systems to follow. You're going to want to do things like scales, absolutely, and very vital. You're going to want to have some kind of a technical regime of different technical exercises and components that you're working through on a monthly basis. You're going to want to do things like long tones. They are so, so good and so important. Then I recommend doing studies. So doing at least one study a week or one study every two weeks if you're super busy. And then of course, all your nice pieces and repertoire that is appropriate to your level. And in fact, this actually brings me straight into my next point, which is do not try to move too fast to soon. So when you've got a good system in place, so you're doing all the right things that you should be doing, Make sure these things are at the right level for you. And don't try and skip five levels ahead or three levels or even one level ahead because you're impatient. It is genuinely the biggest mistake that I see students make is that they skip ahead a whole bunch of levels and they try and learn things that are too difficult for them. I realize that there is a huge gap here. Like we have all these wonderful studies and technical exercises for really advanced players but then for you less advanced players, there seems to be very little. And so we have actually started creating resources that are appropriate for you less advanced players. These resources are actually available on our website for sale. But if you join our premium membership called the Practice Club, we actually provide these resources for you guys on a monthly basis so that you know exactly what you need to practice at your correct level. Basically, I have created no more excuses to not be practicing the right types of things for your level, because they now exist. So if you have started the flute and you feel like you're just stuck and you're not going anywhere, consider that perhaps you are trying to move too fast too soon and you're not getting enough of those lovely foundations in place. The next thing that you absolutely need to do if you want to make progress quickly is practice regularly. In fact, this is one of the most common questions that I do get asked is how long should I be practicing and how regularly? Now, here's the thing. If you are a really busy person and honestly, you can only dedicate one to two hours a week to your flute, if even that, it is going to be better for you to rather space that out over the week as best you can than cram it all on the weekend. And this could genuinely just mean doing like five to 10 minutes of practice a day. 
that is better than doing nothing. In those five to 10 minutes, you can just do wonderful long turns or play a nice scale. It's going to build up and create more consistency than cramming over a weekend. Now, this does not mean you have to practice seven days a week. It does not mean you have to be practicing for hours seven days a week. In fact, use breaks as a tool to make progress. There's some really interesting research coming out on how taking breaks is not only a healthy thing to do in any learning process, but how it can actually help to accelerate that learning process. What we're discovering is that taking small breaks in our learning process, whether it is on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, or on a kind of monthly or annual basis, is incredibly good for us to learn things more quickly. And I think there's kind of two sides to this. On a small scale, when we're practicing, for example, if I'm taking a whole lot of little breaks in between, I'm allowing my brain to just rest enough to actually absorb more information when I step back to it. But there's another interesting side to it where by restarting the process, so say you're practicing something, you're struggling with a particular passage, then you take a bit of a break or you move on to something else, and then you come back to that passage, by restarting that process each time, you're actually accelerating the learning process because your brain is being forced to repeat the information in a short space of time. But you get the point, take breaks. The other really big reason why breaks are so great, and I've experienced this so frequently with my students. So very often I'll say to students, okay, you're gonna take two weeks off either in summer or around Christmas time. And the interesting thing is, is when they come back, they've often improved. Even though they haven't been playing, they've actually improved. And I think this supports this idea that we actually are allowing our brains to process and digest the information and not just cramming in new information all the time. And I think we can build this into our weekly schedule. So for example, you could spend six days a week practicing and then take a day off, or maybe do five out of the seven days, or you practice every alternate day. Figure out what works best for you. And this is going to come by trying out a few different systems. But do not think that you just have to work hard to succeed here. Breaks can be used as a tool to actually improve. And the last point is find some sort of accountability. Now, I don't know what it is about humans, but we are just fairly bad at motivating ourselves. I think we're just incredibly social creatures, which thank goodness for that. Can you imagine if humans weren't social? Like, we would be very, very unhappy because the planet is really full of people. <laughs> uh. Either way, accountability is actually a great way to make sure that you stay motivated, that you stay on track. And the added benefit of it is that it actually helps you to measure your progress when you've got an external person or group of people that are actually listening in on your journey. Now, this could be in the form of getting a teacher, which is always a good idea. It could be in the form of joining some kind of a group like a flute choir or a band. It could be in the form of actually joining a community space. And this brings me straight to my really exciting announcement because we are creating a really cool new community space for you guys. Over the past year, we have been developing a whole new flute learning platform, which incorporates our courses, our resources, our sheet music, basically everything we have been doing up to this point, except now we have put it all together into one space. But the really exciting thing about this is the community spaces. We've got kind of like Facebook for Flute community groups on our site, which you can be a part of. There's a free membership tier, so you can actually sign up for the site for free, or you can become a member joining our premium membership and actually get access to all those cool resources, great practice tips and guides, and actually just be part of a space that will really come alongside you on this journey to support and motivate you every step of the way. We are having a big launch on the 1st of October. So on the 1st of October, we're gonna have a fun live stream here on YouTube. And after that, we are going to be starting a 21 day long tone challenge for all of our premium members. This is gonna be a really, really, really fun opportunity to dive into these things that traditionally are uh, slightly boring for some of us looking at myself here. But my job is to make these really fun for you guys. If you sign up before the 1st of October, we also got an early bird special where you're going to be paying our old membership price, not our new one yet. So make sure that you do sign up before then to take advantage of this. I am so excited. Seriously guys, this has been a lot of work. At least go look at it. 
Happy practicing as always. I'll see you next time.